Hey, what's up everybody? This is Brian and in today's screencast, I'm going to introduce you to a really cool iOS framework called, drumroll please, Replay Kit. Replay Kit records the screen and audio of your application. You can also add your own voice commentary or add your expressions using the front facing camera to make your recordings personal or provide some extra context. It allows your users to play back, scrub, and trim their recordings and finally share the recordings to their favorite social networks and video streaming sites. Replay Kit generates high quality HD recordings that look great on TVs, websites, and mobile devices. Although available in iOS 9, Replay Kit has added some great features in both iOS 10 and 11, allowing developers to live broadcast their recordings to service providers like Twitch or YouTube. Uncharacteristically, Replay Kit doesn't work in the simulator, so everything you'll see here will be shown on an actual device. In this screencast, I'll be adding support for Replay Kit in the zombie brain tic-tac-toe thriller originally featured in the Gameplay Kit Artificial Intelligence Tutorial featured on this site, raywinderlich.com. Now, before I start, I want to give a big thank you to Vijay Sharma for writing and putting together all the materials for this screencast. If you like this screencast, definitely give him a follow on Twitter. Adding Replay Kit to your app is super easy, so let me show it to you by diving in and doing it. In this demo, we're using an app written using SpriteKit, but ReplayKit can be used with apps written purely in UIKit. To get started, I open the game group and select GameScene.Swift. I start by importing ReplayKit into my project by adding the following header to my scene. I've already added a button to start recording and a method to handle the touch event. In order to start recording using ReplayKit, in the body of the method, I first get a handle to the shared RP screen recorder object. I call start recording, passing in a callback. In the callback, if there's an error, I'll just print that to the console. Otherwise, I update the state of the record button so that users know that they're currently recording themselves. And that's all it takes to record your app using ReplayKit. Now, before I build and run, let's quickly see what's going on under the hood to make this all work. When your app calls start recording, the RP screen recorder speaks with the replay kit daemon running in the OS. This daemon will capture your screen into a video recording and store it in a file only accessible to this daemon. This daemon uses low level video and audio APIs to capture the video to keep performance impact on your app very low. Replay kit will avoid recording the system UI, which means any notifications that your user might get while recording won't show up in the final movie. Back in GameScene.Swift, I find the same method where I called start recording. I can use RP screen recorders is recording property to determine if I'm currently recording and to stop the recording accordingly. To stop a recording, I have to call the plainly named method stop recording. This is slightly different from start recording in that it returns in the callback an instance of the RP Preview View Controller. The RP Preview View Controller allows your users to scrub, edit, and share their video recordings in the world. They can also save the recording to their photos or discard it entirely. If I want to show when the user is doing some interacting with the RP View Controller, I'll have to conform to the RP View Controller Delegate Protocol. Here I implement the preview controller did finish method and simply dismiss the controller, being sure to animate it because, well, animations are fun. Now I build and run and tap the record button. I first get a dialog asking if I want to give the app permission to record. This user consent prompt will be displayed every time I call start recording, but once the user has accepted it, it will not be shown again for another eight minutes. Why eight minutes? Well, your guess is as good as mine. In any case, my users now have control over what they'd like to include in their recordings. When I'm done, I tap the stop button and a new view controller gracefully slides into view. Now I can play back my gameplay and share all my losses with all my friends and family. That's all you really need to get recording included in your app. Diving just below the surface, we can see when stop recording is called, the RP screen recorder tells the replay kit daemon running in the OS to return a view controller, 
which itself contains the recording. Replay Kit does provide other APIs that give you direct access to the image or audio samples, but we'll take a look at those some other day. Although recording just the screen can be useful in its own way, it can be fun to include your own reaction to, to the gameplay as part of the recording. Let's do this now. Since I need to access the camera for this part of the demo, I need to add an entry to the info P list with the NS camera usage description key and any text description that I want to show my users as its value. Next, I have to ask for permission from the user to use the camera. I return back to gamescene.swift. I have to do this just before I call start recording, which makes the text I added to the info.p list all the more important. Just before start recording, I set the is camera enabled property to true. Inside the start recording callback, I can use this same property to check if my app has permission to use the camera. I'll use this property to hide or show the camera button, removing the ability entirely in the event my user doesn't want my app to access the camera. I'll also use this opportunity to update the state of my camera button so it's obvious what this button can do. Next, I'll handle touches on this button to hide or show the camera. I'll safely ignore any button presses if I'm already recording. The RP Screen Recorder provides a convenient recorder.camera preview view property which returns a UI view instance of the front facing camera which I'll keep a reference to. If I'm currently holding an instance of the view, I can assume that the user wants to remove the camera from the recording, and I'll release a reference to the view. I'll also update the state of the camera button so it's clear what the user will expect the next time they tap it. I can add this view directly into my view hierarchy. I'll also hold on an instance of the view so I can remove it from the hierarchy so the user can toggle between hiding and showing their face in the recording. If I'm currently not holding an instance of the camera view, I can also get a reference from the RP screen recorder. I'll size the view to something that will reasonably fit within my app. And I'll add the view into my view hierarchy. I'll also update the state of the camera button so it will be obvious to my users that tapping it again will remove the camera from the recording. I'll also remove the view when the user stops the recording. And finally, I update the state of the camera button so it's back to its initial state. I build and run and start recording. I tap the camera button, and now I can show the world my steely focused try hard look when I lose badly at tic tac toe. There's a lot more to Replay Kit, including the ability to share your screen directly to a live streaming service or capturing the individual video and audio samples in your own app. Of course, if you find yourself stuck and forgot how to use Replay Kit, well then just replay this video to get yourself started anew. No kit required. For more screencasts and video courses about iOS development, keep coming back to raywinderlich.com. Cheers.